Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A quick look at the price action in yields last week will show us that five-year notes are now flirting with the highs of this move around the 2.13% yield. We closed just below the previous highs and since we have, non, uh, since we have uh, the FOMC meeting this week, the market has discounted fully a uh, 25 basis point adjustment in rates in the States. We are not as bearish uh, on uh, prices in bond markets as we were. We think this is now discounting even more than we will get out of the Fed and uh, the guidance that especially that we'll get out of the Fed. We think there is a distinct possibility that we go another maybe 10 basis points and that will be the fifth wave of uh, this very clear five wave up that we are in, after which time we will have a significant retracement, uh, certainly in time, if not in price. The same thing is very much evident in the 10-year note, uh, which has much the same um, uh, structure as the five-year yields. Uh, here we uh, have not managed to make a new high. We think at some stage we will, but then we will probably trade in uh, this area for a cons uh, consolidating for a uh, longer period of time around the 250 to 265 uh, area in yield before we decide to make the next move which again because of the structure of this five wave after retracement should be again higher but certainly we don't think that that is going to happen until the late summer early autumn so we have several months of indecision and up and down trading before the next break higher. This is a chart of the five-year bobble uh, in Germany and we can see that actually it has followed the price action in the States to the tick, which actually shows us that the spread between bunds and uh, five-year notes or 10-year notes, uh, certainly um, generics in the States, is not changing very much at all, uh, which is rather surprising you would have thought that the uh, European markets would lag any increase in, uh, in, in yields in the States, but that is not the case. They're moving in parallel and now we have a situation in which we think that the uptrend in uh, five-year uh, yields in Germany is m almost set. Which would be a very important development if you can see where the five-year note came from in um, in uh, Europe. It came from these yields around the two percent to two fifty percent area. Uh, we have a long, long way to go to catch up to those yields, which were. Uh, existing in 2011-2012 before the big easing by the ECB and the whatever it takes from Draghi. Draghi, in our opinion this week, uh, proclaimed victory in his battle against deflation and now we have room for the yields in Germany and certainly in Europe as a whole to start the updrift back towards where they came from in 2011 and 2012 when he proclaimed his war on deflation. This is a weekly chart of Bund yields, so 10-year yields. We can see easily that they have broken every downtrend line and they are now beginning to coil for a move higher. We certainly think that we will reach at some stage yield levels which were evident in 2011-2012, so that is around the 2% area. Uh, we know that this is a very 
uh, radical call, but this is what we think the uh, the politics and the economics is dictating uh, altogether. There is quite a high possibility that some deal will be made with the U.S. administration uh, to allow the euro to drift higher against the dollar and relieve the pressure on U.S. manufacturing and that can only happen through allowing uh, rates in the uh, EU to rise, uh, therefore giving you a higher level of Euro USD. We don't see any other possibility how they can um, conjecture a higher level of Euro USD without allowing German rates to drift higher and actually answer the prayers of the European banks who want higher or even a steeper yield curve to improve profitability. Uh, we could have very much a situation that we had in the States last year when, uh, the, Europe, when the US banks uh, exploded in uh, equity price because of the movement in the yield curve and the resulting pro profitability uh, that was implied by those moves. So we are getting quite bullish of European banks as a result because we think that over the course of the next year or two we could have quite a move higher in bond yields back up to where they came from in 2012. Uh, this is the 2% level uh, where they traded for a long time and we think that that is achievable over the course of the next year or two. The timing of any such move higher in buns and bobbles should be given by the two-year notes, the shats, which as we can see is still very much still in a downtrend. All we are getting in the moment in Europe is a steeper yield curve. The two-year is quite anchored, uh, as you can see it's trading at minus 83 basis points. Until we see a turn in this moving average higher and in higher yields back up towards zero, uh, the chances are that the move in buns and five-year notes, the bobble, can only be gradual and small because all they d that is happening is that the yield curve is steepening and there is an actual limit to uh, how much a yield curve can steepen. So all timing signals now will be given by the shats and we will be watching it very closely. Uh, any move above the minus 73 basis points level breaking the uh, Bollinger moving average will indicate that we are starting a move uh, quite a bit higher and that the whole yield curve in Germany can shift. The reason why this hasn't happened yet is because of the flight to safety uh, in ahead of the French and Dutch elections. The Dutch elections are next week and the French elections are in May. We doubt that this move can get a real head of steam until we get the results of the French election. If those are positive, we will see the yield curve fly and as a result, we will see a, a, a much higher level of Euro USD. This is a chart that we have uh, shown you often. This is the yield level of the five-year note and this is a chart of the uh, DX, the dollar index. Until very recently, the two moved very much in parallel uh, and the co correlation between them was very high indeed. This correlation has quite clearly now broken down as you can see, as yields have risen in the States, the rise in the DX was much less and on Friday actually the correlation broke down completely. What does that imply? That implies that the 
uh, difference in yields between the EU and the US is now no longer just moving because of movements in US interest rates, with European interest rates staying roughly constant. It tells you that the uh, spread between the U US and the EU is constant and therefore there is room for the DX to give up its gains. If now the movement between the e US and EU interest rates goes into reverse, as we expect it to, the DX is setting itself up for a very nasty fall, certainly up towards this trend line, which has held it since uh, last year. And that trend line comes in at 99. So we are looking for a good 2.5% uh, fall from current levels over the course of the next several weeks and months. This is a, a weekly chart of the dollar index. It is still undoubtedly in an uptrend. What we can say is that it has answered and given us the minimum objectives that we would have been waiting for i.e. this would have been a first wave with a third wave, consolidation in a fourth wave and new highs a fifth wave. Whether this is complete or not, we cannot tell, but we can see that the long-term risk reward is very much shifting towards the downside in DX. Uh, could this market still make a marginal new, new high? Absolutely it could. We cannot give, give you the timing, but we can just say that the risk reward for 5 to 10% moves is now very much to the downside in DX. We would expect it certainly to trade in the 80s uh, before it trades much higher than 105 or 106. Uh, this is a very good long-term risk reward and gives us the... Um, the, 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 the pattern of our trading, uh, what we will do and what we'll be looking at over the course of the next several months uh, when we will be putting on trades to look for a move certainly to this 200 week moving average which is now to at 90. Uh, we, we are quite convinced that we have started the move, the retracement move in the dollar which is something that the Trump administration will very much welcome uh, because it is in their political interest. This is a chart that we are showing you for probably the first time and it is a daily chart of Euro Swiss. We think that Euro Swiss here is very important together with Euro uh, New Zealand. Euro Swiss is a measure of fear Basically, it is a measure of the fear that people have in a disintegrating EU uh, when Europeans uh, wish to insulate themselves from potential political trouble, they go and buy Swiss francs for euros. As you can see over the past several days, the level of fear has significantly receded. We are now at the sloping uh, trend line, uh, downtrend line, and we are at the 200-day moving average. If we now start establishing price patterns above them, we will be uh, setting up for a very large move upwards into the French elections, and that will indicate a much stronger level of euro overall. Why is that important? It's important because the euro is 65% of the dollar index and therefore the movement in the euro will determine the movement in the dollar index. And this is a daily chart of the euro against the New Zealand dollar. This one is important because we have a low yielding currency against a high yielding currency. Movements like this indicate anticipation that those spreads are likely to come in 
i.e. the euro will stop being such a you know, low yielding currency or naturally the New Zealand dollar will stop being such a high yielding currency since movements in rates in New Zealand are very constant this indicates a an expectation from the FX market that the next sizable move in European rates is higher and that is more or less what between the lines Draghi told you on uh, on Thursday. This is a pronounced important development. When was the last time you had such a sustained period of up move which has broken the 200 day moving average? Granted we are likely to have uh, small retracements here down towards the 150 area but if that is all we get in the days ahead the pattern will be set for much higher prices going back up towards the 170 area over the course of the next several weeks if we now have a look on a weekly chart we will see that Euro New Zealand actually has been very constant since the uh, timing of the um, the Draghi whatever it takes which happened in 2011 we are now looking for certainly moves back up towards the 172 level in uh, Euro New Zealand and possibly quite a bit higher above 2 or 210 this is going to given the fact that this market could not you know with all the bearish news about the euro could not even get back down to the lows around 140 that it experienced in early 2015 we think the risk reward now is much higher around the 2 area rather than just the 170 area over the next several months which would give you a much higher level of euro USD and finally a chart of euro USD itself as you can see it has done absolutely not much to the upside yet the spreads the euro CHF and the euro N NZD have done a huge amount to indicate to us where the next big move in this contract will take place and it will be to the upside we certainly expect it to test the 200 day moving average uh, over the course of the next month or so and then after a period of retracement to go back up towards the 112 115 area which you couldn't break over the course of the past several years once that it is broken the way will be open for much higher prices in euro USD but we will concentrate certainly on this next move which should take it back up towards 112 to 114. This is a weekly uh, chart of EURUSD. As you can see the moving averages are still very much pointing downwards. It is unlikely that this market can trade above 110 uh, without a significant period of price action work between the 106 and the 110 area it has to uh, do something like it had it did here as you can see this is th a, a good six months work before it broke uh, the uh, moving averages and started working higher so do not expect this move to become uh, rapid or to uh, happen all at once it will work sideways now for a considerable period of time before breaking up but that gives us a uh, a knowledge of how to trade it uh, trade it short term and trade it against moving averages coming from the lower bound one uh, system that we have which has proven itself extremely uh, profitable is one that we do on the 15 minute uh, euro USD 
on the moving averages. Every time it catches this moving average, we have a buy signal. So basically what we'll be doing over the course of the next several months is to have this moving average as a uh, bias. If it is upward sloping, we will trade. And if it's downward sloping, we will not trade. And that is what we'll tweet to you every um, every few days by signals against this moving average. As far as US equities are concerned, we expect this up move to be a B wave retracement, which should peter out in the 2380s before the final wave down, which should take it to at least 2337 over the course of the next couple of weeks from where we can expect a reaction higher in a fifth wave. We do not expect the market to be able to make much headway over the course of the next couple of weeks, uh, certainly because of the interest rate hikes and also because of the differential that we think is now completely in favour of EU uh, equities as opposed to uh, US equities. The equity market which is in an uptrend is stocks. We certainly expect it to trade over the course of the next couple of weeks at 3486 which is this very important line coming back from all the way from 09. Uh, it is the one market which has liberated its Bollinger Bands and can now trend. Certainly 3,486 we think will be a level which will be uh, traded over the course of the next couple of weeks while the ES does very much uh, nothing and trades in a 50 point range up and down retracing its recent gains. Certainly we think uh, buying uh, buying Europe is much preferred over buying the States at the moment. If we are right in expecting a higher overall level of Euro and if we have the preference for buying European equities, then it follows that the instrument which should have the highest benefit is FEU. FEU is the ETF in dollars of the stocks 50. And as we can see, it is now beginning to uptrend. It is still at the same levels as it was uh, th th last year in uh, July and also in November. So this is this depreciation here is all the result of the dollar moving higher. If that is to be unwound and the market in Europe is to go higher, we could have an explosion in FEU. 3184 is the important level. If we clear this previous high, we will be in a period of higher highs and higher lows, the definition of a bull market. The market has broken the trend line down and is very nicely set up for much higher prices. So FEU is the recommended instrument to play our opinions and we will be looking for places to get long and add to our positions. And finally our biases for next week and these are longer term biases as well. In the five years and ten years we think probably the safest trade at the moment is to be short the five year and long the ten year. Boons and bobble, as we have shown you, are at the moment very dangerous because we are trading at the upper level of the Bollinger Bands, but we do expect the yields to go much higher over time. And in the short term, that will completely depend on the politics and the results of various elections. But our preference longer term is very much for normalization of these tensions and being short of buns and bobble is a high risk, high reward proposition. Why high risk? Because if the EU falls apart after a Le Pen victory in France, however unlikely, then buns will benefit hugely. 
uh, and high reward is because if uh, those tensions are normalized, the move from negative yields to positive yields could be very fast and go from minus 50 basis points in yield to plus 100 basis points in yield in literally a few weeks. Uh, so that has to be very carefully watched. The commodity prices did uh, nothing but go down last week therefore they are not in um, showing you any tensions uh, regarding the bond markets. The ES, as we've uh, told you, we think the third wave is now exhausted and we have final retracement objectives around the 23.40-23 level. Uh, we think that any move above 23.80 to 85 warrants buying put spreads something like the 23.85 or 23.90 puts against being short the 23.40 puts. Uh, NQ, we're neutral. Russell 2000 is the one that actually is showing you that there is very little upside at the moment in US equities. 13.46 is a very important level and then 13.39 becomes exceedingly important. If we have a close below 13.39, we think there will be a sharp, quick, sharp, two, three percent sell-off in all uh, US markets. European equities certainly are the preferred long and we think 34.86 will trade at some stage. As we just showed you, FEU is the preferred ETF to play that one. DX, we, are, we will watch the pattern of retracements. If we cannot regain 102, we think the long-term downtrend will start gathering pace and will certainly take it down towards 99. As we keep on telling you, short bubble, long stocks is the big trade, the one that will make money over the long term. Certainly not something that you can uh, trade uh, in and out of but something that if you can, you could just put on and leave on and walk away from and it will make a bundle of money over the course of the next 12 months. EM, uh, EEM, rather, emerging markets, is the leader to the downside now. As we told you, it would be. Uh, the buy targets are 36.50 to 36.20 until we reach those targets. Uh, ES is also likely to suffer to the downside. And Dow Jones Transports is still making lower lows and is the tell of this market that the uh, this short-term rally in ES will not be sustained and somewhere around the 2380 to 2390 level is the place to buy uh, longer-term put spreads for a move back down to 23.30 at least in the ES. But we think that the more important uh, markets over the course of the next few weeks will be European equities and the dollar, not so much the dollar as the euro. Um, and FEU is certainly uh, our preferred instrument, even FEU longs uh, and shorts in SPY. Thank you very much for listening to us and seeing our long-term biases. We will be with you as of Monday. Have a very nice day.